Today I'm here taking a look at the Transformers Generation 2 UK comic, uh, which was only a really short-lived comic in 1994 to 1995. It only lasted five issues. Um, now I was a big fan of the UK Marvel Transformers comic in the 80s and early 90s and gutted when it ended. So seeing a new comic out was really exciting for me, even though I didn't realise it existed until issue four, only for issue five to then be the last issue. Um, but thanks to eBay, I finally managed to fill in the gaps and I thought I'd take a look at them here with you. Now this is issue one, it's got a free sticker on the front. I pull the side here, see the cover there with Generation 2, Megatron and Optimus Prime. One of the gimmicks of this comic is that it was a transforming comic and by that they basically mean that it has these fold-out sections which would have fact files in or posters or extensions of the story and here we've got a Ram, Jet and Megatron fact file and here is a UK original Generation 2 story see Optimus Prime and Bumblebee there I think the first three issues, possibly only the first two issues, had original UK material and then it started reprinting the American Generation 2 comics that Marvel did. Now this is nice to see being in the UK. Decepticons attacking London. I always like seeing England in movies and comics and that that I enjoy. See Big Ben there in the background getting attacked. Got some of the new Generation 2 Decepticons, and at this point, Bludgeon's still in charge. You've got the War World up there. Quite nice artwork. I don't know who does it. Robin Smith and Bambus. I remember he used to do the, the Slimer backup strip in the Marvel Ghostbuster comics. Got a bit of a flashback here to the original story of the Ark crash landing on Earth. Here we have the uh, transforming comic ability again. See the middle part here folds out into a poster. Quite nice artwork, there's a picture there of a destroyed Decepticon or Autobot that I think looks quite cool. More of the story. Filling in the gaps and explaining away what's been going on. And then at the end of the issue, Megatron reappears. Another fold out part on the back cover, Fat Files of Grimlock and Optimus Prime. And on the back here, quite an interesting picture of the Dinobots there. Advertising the next issue. I don't know where that art works from. I don't think it appears in the next issue. And then more of the stickers that came free with the issue. There's issue two. Even more free stickers. And there, a picture of Grimlock in his Generation 2 neon colours. Once again, folds out. Fat file of Jazz and Piranha this time. One of the uh, rotor box Generation 2 original character. What a nice drawing of Megatron's face there. Same guy doing the art again. Robin Smith. Grimlock, once again, in his Generation 2 colours. I don't think he uh, was was done in those colours in the American strip. I think he was more the uh, original colours, not the garish neon early 90s, everything has to be neon look. 
And this time the central pages fold out into a game. It's kind of cool. I guess with each square you land on there's a different task or whatever you have to do. War world in the middle there. Megatron outside. Not bad. And the central pages were always glossy, whereas the rest was just a more of a regular rough kind of paper. More of this UK original story, all the Dinobots involved. I think Simon Furman wrote these stories. And they do try and tie it in with the American strips. Competition here. Once in a lifetime competition to win some G2 toys. Another fact file fold out of Blitz and Starscream. And then the back of the stickers there, the Dinobots, next issue. And that's a cover from the American comics that they're using next issue. Whereas these first two issues had UK original cover artwork. Here we have issue three, Dinobots Unleashed. I do like this artwork. There was some quite cool artwork in the American Generation 2 comics. This time the fold out at the front actually starts the story. Yeah, and here we have American material. So it was only the first two issues that had the, uh, the UK original stuff. But I do love UK original Transformers stories. There's something very nostalgic about it for me as a fan of the, the original Marvel UK stories. And uh, they've done it for most UK comics, the Armada comic, the 2007 kind of movie verse comic and the new Robots in Disguise have all had at least one UK original strip. The letters page we just went past and now we're on to the American reprinted stuff. Another poster here on the middle pages. I didn't mind G2 when it came out. I mean, I was going to eat up anything that was Transformers, but I guess the lack of the ongoing comic and cartoon series made it a bit harder to really get into it as much as I had Generation 1. But it was the stepping stone that brought us Beast Wars. I do like this artwork. And this unfolds for more of the story on the last page. And the back cover's just advertising X-Men toys, which was getting big at the time. Now eventually all of Generation 2 was reprinted in the UK in um, paperbacks, in trade paperbacks by Titan in the early noughties. But until then, I um, really had no idea how this story ended. Now this is the first issue I picked up, because I, I didn't realise it was around unfortunately, so I missed those first three and didn't know how to get back issues. But I always thought this was a cool cover, Megatron with Bludgeon's head in his hand. Introduction page. More fact files, a side swipe and snarl. And this was my introduction to Generation 2. Quite cool imagery of the Earth being destroyed. The Decepticons attacking. It was nice seeing the, the storyline from the end of the Marvel run continued here with Bludgeon being in charge. We have another poster with the Dinobots there, alongside Megatron and some Decepticons, oddly enough. I don't know if it's because the artist didn't really know what he was doing, it was just a job and he didn't care about who was on whose side, or if that was supposed to be when they unite against Chaxus. Yeah, Starscream and Megatron show up. Show Bludgeon who's boss. Take control of the situation. The letters page, and then this opens up just to, to finish the story off. And 
and then once again another X-Men toy advert. And then the fifth and final issue. Now I think this cover is actually a bit of arc work um, from the stories. It's not a reprint of an American cover, and I don't think it's an original cover designed for the UK. I think they just took a still from the comic inside. And it says up here, Welcome to the latest and sadly last issue of Transformers Generation 2. It really has been a pleasure for us here at Fleetway to chronicle the adventures of the most exciting and action-packed robot characters in the universe over the last few months. It's certainly clear that there are thousands of dedicated Transformers followers out there from your wonderful letters, and we are presenting a special transmissions gallery of all your pictures in this issue. Unfortunately, our All Too Brief series is destined to go no further, for the time being. A fact that disappoints us as much as it must disappoint you. The long-time Transformers fans among you will know not to despair, however, since the war between the Autobots and Decepticons goes on, and you never know where they will turn up next. So keep on watching your TV screens and those comic shelves. And it was a good 13 years. Oh no, actually, no, I think it was about 10 years, sorry. Nine or 10 years before we got another UK Transformers comic based on Armada, which I'll go into next time. Yeah, open up that and the story begins. And we get to see the kind of birth of the Transformers to an extent here, and uh, this is the first introduction I got to Jaxus as well. The poster here, based on the strip inside, the Autobots basically training on an asteroid or something, or a moon, which we then see here in the comic strip. First time we see Transformers somehow reproducing. Art galleries, pictures people are sent in. And the end of the story. Even though it does say at the bottom here, next Earth. <laughs> it was not to be continued in the UK, unfortunately. Such a shame, but I mean, in the early 90s, the comic industry in the UK just died a death. Never the end, the battle goes on. And it did, and I'll get into Armada next time. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I haven't seen any other videos about Generation 2 UK comics, so I thought I'd just throw this in there for anyone interested. Thanks for watching again. Bye.